Hey guys, Maple Tell here. Today we're taking a look at the recently released beta for the game Cattails Wildwood Story, and talking about my final experiences of the alpha. I'll be covering all the new features that have been added since I made my last video on the game, playing the alpha in December. There is some really exciting stuff waiting for us, and one feature in particular I have been super looking forward to. So let's get into it. Before I start my new beta save file, let's look at where I left off with Thorn, commander of the Misty Kingdom. With Thorn, I was romancing Phantom, one of my favorite of the new cats. While I've tried the shiny trinket in the demo with Maple and Fliss, I wanted to try again here just to see if anything was any different. There still weren't weddings implemented at this time, but I did get a little notice in the mail about it, and more importantly, in something I wasn't expecting yet, Phantom moved in with Thorn. Super adorable. One small thing that I couldn't include in the last video was the herbalist's table for your den, as you can't unlock it until year two. So I reached that point on my own playtime and bought it from Ember. Definitely a nice little quality of life thing. I'm always running out of health stuff, especially in the winter, so hopefully this will help out a bit. Speaking of winter, I was able to try out the final two festivals, Falls and Winters. They were both super cute. The Fall Festival had such spooky vibes, with fog, pumpkins, and Halloween-themed confetti raining down. The minigame was a new one here, Pumpkin Roll. And it was leagues above <laughs> the frustrating pumpkin carving of Cattails 1. Here you avoid getting pushed by pumpkins into the fire at the edge of the screen. Fun, chaotic, and not infuriating like pumpkin carving was. <laughs> Some cute items in the shop here too, like dragon wings. For winter, it was a nice snowy day, and all the trees in the place were lit up in holiday lights. The minigame was a familiar one but I think improved from the first game, much like the turtle races of summer. And that's snowball fights. In Wildwood Story, you can freely run around the area throwing snowballs, and you don't have lives, unlike in Become a Cat, making it a more fun and fast-paced experience. Thoroughly enjoyed. I loved the prizes too. The antlers were my favorite, and I'd love to make them a permanent addition to a future cat's design. There were also some other big new features added in this time of the alpha. Let's talk about the new map first. 14 new regions were added, extending the map to a pretty massive size. And it's not even at full release size yet. Pretty amazing. I spent some time walking around and exploring each new area. I found the desert to be especially cool and really different from the previous areas of the map from the early alpha. Related to the new areas is the influence system. Like in Cattails Become a Cat, you can up your influence in a region by battling, patrolling, using lavender, or even just hunting and gathering. And once you up it enough, the region is considered part of your territory. I'd love to claim the entire map one day, but that gets a little tricky with the new features of this game. Not a bad thing, just a challenge that I'm excited to overcome. Unlike Cattails 1, there are some really interesting bonuses that come with claiming territory. And that's construction materials. Every day, you can send out a number of patrols to the area of your choosing. If the tile doesn't belong to you, then it's considered a battle patrol, and the cats you send out will have to fight against void cats for claim of the land. A battle in which you can help fight. If it does belong to you, it's a resource patrol. Each tile is listed with the resources it contains, and the amount of those resources. And what you collect there, or items that you donate, can be used in larger projects. The items are also added to a stockpile, where you can get all sorts of perks depending on what's there. Like easier friendship gain, extra health, or bonus XP. But like I said, the exciting part of these resources are the construction projects. There are a bunch, like a barracks upgrade, which allows you to send out more patrols every day, cultivation for better herbs, better roofing for bonus XP, and health regain when sleeping, litter for bonus task tokens, chisels for making diamonds more common, and a compendium for increased spawn of legendary prey. 
all really cool and helpful stuff. Definitely gonna be worth it to try to upgrade them all. Lastly, for my alpha experience updates, a few smaller features. There are new items and rewards in all the shops, including embers, molos, and at the task board, and new seed recipes for the garden. When decorating your den, you can now search for specific items in the search bar. And there are new skills to try and unlock. And I got this one bit of curious dialogue from Fliss, saying that they had heard from Spark that Charlotte thought Fliss's ears were pretty. I wonder if this is going to be for romantic NPC relationships? Either way, I thought it was so cute and I had to mention it. And that's about it from where I left off in the alpha. So many new features. <laughs> And more to come as I hop into the beta, where I can check out the content that was released from March and February. So let's grab a new save file and a new cat just for the beta. I decided their name and pelt ages ago, and have even drawn them already. Their name is Pear. I imagine them to be a descendant of two of my cats from the first game, Doe and Lilac, who were in turn children of... Dapple and Lightning, respectively. And all of that inspired Pear's coat and eye colors. The colony will also be named after Lilac, making Pear the overseer of the Lilac realm. With Pear, I'll be romancing Spark, which should be extra special as weddings and even kittens have finally been added to the game. I could not be more excited. I'm half tempted to return to my demo and alpha playthroughs at some point just to get the kittens for them too. We'll see, we'll see. We get new stuff right away with a fancy new introductory sequence. It was really cool and a great way to start off the story. You start with the same cutscene that's been there since the demo, but now once the gameplay starts, you're not even in the Wildwood yet, where you will one day end up calling home. You're in a small forested area with all the survivors of the earthquake tragedy that destroyed the world of Cattails 1. You've got cats like Coco, Ellie, Crampy, Jag, Spark, and Ember. Like in Cattails 1, Coco serves as a tutorial as well as a character. They give you some small missions to learn how to gather, hunt, and fight. I won't show you the whole thing, as it's roughly 20 minutes long, but it was really cool to get some more story elements in the game, which I wasn't really expecting because I know the main story hasn't been implemented yet. Anyways, you find the Wildwood, and get into choosing your camp. This mechanic has been in the game for a while, but this was my first replay since it was added, so a new experience for me. I chose the meadow, as I've already done the forest themed one, and a custom rocky territory that I built myself. And it fit my planned name for the colony best. I liked the layout, but it had a lot of water. So the build menu came in handy, as I was able to easily add bridges and paths across. For Pear's Den, I went with an artsy flower theme to match the meadow and the lilac named realm. So lots of cute flowers, wooden floors, and walls to match the outside. Lots of wooden furniture too, and candles. Which actually sounds a little dangerous, but that's okay. Let's get into the map a bit. There's whole new art for it, which is honestly gorgeous. I find it slightly hard to see which tiles I've taken over, but overall, I really like it. And there are also an additional 14 tiles unlocked with the beta. I especially liked the spooky ruins of a farmhouse in the upper left corner, and all the weird glowing water around it. The flowery meadows were also really pretty, and on theme for my colony, so I mostly focused on conquering those. It's awesome to finally see what I assume is the whole map, so many diverse biomes and such a large area to explore. I also found the Tunnel Projects, which is the new fast travel system, when I was wandering around, and how to build them with Talon. That'll be super useful when I actually get the resources to build that. I also did a bunch of exploring with the new Buddy Up system, where you can ask any cat you've got a three star or higher friendship with to follow you around. I've only asked Spark so far, as I'm close to them due to trying to romance them. But it looks like every cat has different skills and abilities to help you on your adventure, and can even level up. Any cat also includes your kittens, as you'll see later. I really like traveling around with Spark, 
They could pick up herbs for me, help fight void cats, and even hunt. Not that they were particularly good at hunting. I liked that your buddy gives you a few seconds if you want to try to catch a certain piece of prey instead of them. It makes for a less frustrating experience, especially with like legendary prey. Speaking of Spark, I did get their relationship up enough with Pear to give them the red rose and date them. No marriage yet, so I'll have to include wedding ceremonies in a later video. There was already a lot going on. <laughs> Which also means no kittens yet. But I absolutely had to check out this feature. So I did end up going back to Maple and Thorn's save files and had some kittens there. It only took about a season from the cats asking about kittens to the birth, which feels much faster than the first game, which was always a bit of a slog in that department. I am super impressed by the kitten system. The inheritance system makes it so there are near infinite combinations for these little guys. They even get their own little unique portrait, and you get to choose between five different designs for each of your four kittens, which is a dream and a nightmare. How am I supposed to choose? It took a hot minute, I'll tell you that. The kittens are an adorable combination between the two parents. So lots of purple and white for Maple and Fliss, and lots of orange and gray for Thorn and Phantom. They even inherited my cat's odd eyes. Love. I used my typical naming system for the Cattails kittens, taking the first letters of the parents' names and using that for the babies. So Maple and Fliss have Mink, Mouse, Fern and Flight, and Thorn and Phantom have Topaz, Tiger, Prim, and Pond. I love them so much. I'll definitely have to get Pear and Sparks litter by the end of my beta playthrough. And that's all the big stuff, so let's take a quick look at some of the smaller but still exciting updates. I found a new minigame at the Spring Festival, I think? Might have been summer. Either way, it's called Paw Hunt and you basically just chase after paw icons for extra festival tokens. I was happy to discover another one of these after finding Catfish River in my last video. There are also two new useful items. The Greedy Paw and the Wretched Talisman. The Greedy Paw is available for purchase from Molo and is used for automatically picking up items, which is a game changer in the mines. It's a bit of a pain picking up every stone down there, and this makes it much more efficient. Just don't wear it when you're in the overworld, walking by your carefully organized piles like I did. The second item, I didn't have the resources to craft yet, but it's called the Wretched Talisman, and it's used to summon invasions of void cats, an optional bit of battling. I'm excited to try it out when I can afford it. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. I truly adore this game, and I'm looking forward to the full release later this year. I plan to do another video around the end of the beta, where I'll check out marriage, ceremonies, pairs kittens, and anything else that gets added by then. I'll also likely do a video on the full release of the game. And I know there's been a little bit of interest in me doing a playthrough of it. Um, we'll see if I'm not too nervous about that. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next Thursday.